Das ist wie ein Zwiebel von Wort. I want to welcome everyone here this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to thank you for making it today to be here this morning. Today is the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. And gradually, the month is rolling to an end. It is my prayers that the Lord will keep us in good health with long life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our announcements are in the bulletin and for emphasis sake, I will just mention one or two. A memorial donation has been made to the window project in loving memory of Shelley McCallum by Willie McCallum. Thank you very much for this. The, we have a project that is going on in the church, the window project, and the total cost is $25,000. Now we have $3,560. If you'd like to contribute to this project, please let us talk to Mary at the church office. And also, during the summer period, I know some of us will travel out of town. And if you'd like to continue to donate to the church, please, you can sign up for PAR. It is pre authorized uh, remittance. And it is very easy. Just talk to Mary in the church office. During the month of August, we'll be worshiping in this auditorium and we have five speakers. One speaker for one Sunday. It's going to be very, very powerful. I want to encourage you not to miss the service in August. Even if you are not in town, make sure you join online. It's going to be powerful. And also in September, we will we'll start with intergenerational service. The first Sunday is September. Second Sunday, we will be hosting ukulele group. And on third Sunday, we will be hosting a design effect. So, and starting from the first Wednesday in September, we are starting as a Bible story and a prayer fellowship. So please, let us prepare our mind as we roll forward in Christ. I know things will start to happen for us. And during the week, I was out visiting people. If you know anyone that loves visitation or that needs a pastoral care, please let you can call the church office. And I promise you that within the week, you will find time to be with you. Amen. And please let us sing the intro together as we. It is written in our. Bulletin, more verses number 13. Who led the path for on me? And we stand as we are able. We are singing the first verse. We are singing the first verse. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your Lord and your staff. 
a comfort. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us worship. Let us pray together. Dear Jesus, we give you praise for whom you have. Reveal your presence to us as we gather in worship. Send your Holy Spirit to renew us. Raise our thoughts that we reckon on your promises and trust with hope in promises yet to come. For we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Our first aim is taken from Voices United, number 240, and it is Praise my soul, the God of heaven, and you may stand as you are able. We will sing all the five verses. together. Let us pray. Dear God, when we are groaning and grieving, comfort us and forgive our shortcomings. When we are doubting and afraid, comfort us and reveal your promises to us. Help us trust with hope and wait with patience. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 
hear the good news as we record it in Romans chapter 8, verses 1 to 2. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives lives has set you free from the law of sin and death. Believe the good news of the scripture. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and set free. Amen. 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 This morning, you have anything to celebrate, maybe your birthday, your anniversary, yeah, I would like to share with the church this morning. Please let us. Maybe you are at home and you would like to share something, just put it on our Facebook page and we will share with the church. Anniversary, celebration, birthday. Amy's dead birthday today. Happy birthday to him. We'll come for a cake. Any other birthday celebrations? Okay, let's sing uh, for Congratulations to you All glory to God May God's riches bless It is time for special music. What a beautiful name. It is a title. And please just wait for it to. Hmm? Oh, sorry. I raise a hallelujah. I'm sorry. I raise a hallelujah. So if you know it, please sing along. If you, if you are not quite familiar with it, just. Hmm. 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 Yeah. Okay, so we have verse two. We're going back and forth. In the middle of the night. 
Reading from 1 Kings, chapter 19, verses 1 to 21. And it's Elijah waiting to Simon. When Ahab got home, he told Jezebel everything Elijah had done, including the way he had killed all the prophets of Baal. So Jezebel sent this message to Elijah. May the gods strike me and even kill me, if this time tomorrow I have not killed you, just as you killed them. Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Beersheba, a town in Judah, and he left his servant there. Then he went on alone into the wilderness, traveling all day. He sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life, for I'm no better than my ancestors who have already died. Then he lay down and slept under the broom tree. But as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and told him, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there beside his head was some bread baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Then the angel of the Lord came again and touched him and said, Get up and eat some more, or the journey ahead will be too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank, and the food gave him enough strength to travel 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. There he came to a cave where he spent the night. But the Lord said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah replied, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets, I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by, and a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was the sound of a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And a voice said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied again, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty. But the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me, too. Then the Lord told him, Go back the same way you came, and travel to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive there, 
anoint Hazael to be king of Aram, then anoint Jael, grandson of Nimshi, to be the king of Israel, and anoint Elisha, son of Saphat, from the town of Abel Mahola, to replace you as my prophet. Anyone who escapes from Hazael will be killed by Jael, and those who escape Jael will be killed by Elisha. Yet I will preserve 7,000 others in Israel who have never bowed down to Baal or kissed him. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Speak to us this morning, our dear Jesus, you are the word of life. I pray that the entrance of your word will give us light and give us understanding this morning. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Once again, I want to welcome everyone here this morning. I want to say thank you for making today to be here. Throughout the month of uh, June and July, I'll be speaking on a series titled Still Worship. And I'll be running off next Sunday. This morning, I'll be speaking to us on Panacea to the Sting of Burnout. Is it Panacea? Yeah. Panacea to the Sting of Burnout. And I'll be speaking to us right from 1st King chapter 19, right to us this morning, from verses 1 uh, going forward. Let us quickly describe or define some cogent words there. What is panacea? It's a solution or remedy for all the difficulties or diseases. Then sting. Sting is a small, sharp pointed organ at the end of the abdomen abdomen of beeps, wasps, ants, and scorpions, capable of inflicting a pain or dangerous wound by injecting poison. And what is burnout? Burnout is a state of emotional, physical, mental, and spiritual hazard caused by excessive and prolonged stress. It occurs when you are overwhelmed spiritually, and emotionally green and unable to meet constant demands. So this morning what I want to talk about is how do we overcome burnout? I know some of us are quite aware that during this COVID that is ongoing, so many people have been have given up. That's what I'm, I'm going to say. I've met so many people with different stories and different uh, characters. Not only uh, them, but also some of us here, every one of us, at one time or the other, we experience this. It is not a simple experience, born out, but it is how we do what we handle it. Is a state of emotional, physical, mental, and spiritual. A housing when you when, when you are overtaken, when everything that you have you are using, there's no more reserve. This is caused by excessive and what prolonged stress. It occurs when you are overwhelmed spiritually, you are drained, and what you have been able to do with ease, you now start to do what you now start to complain. It is only me. I can't do it again. I get too much. Eventually, you may feel like you have nothing more to give. Do I tell you that the negative events of burnout spills over into every area of our life, including our spiritual life, our family life, our work, our social life? Burnout can also cause long term changes to your body that will make you vulnerable to illnesses like colds and flu and so many other diseases because of 
because of its many consequences, it is important to deal with Bola right away. The passage that we read this morning is quite familiar to some of us. Very, very quite familiar to some of us. After most of spiritual achievement, always come what? A challenge. Go and study. After spiritual achievement, after spiritual success, there is always what? One challenge is for the other. Elijah experienced the death of fatigue and discouragement just after his two great spiritual victories. The defeat of the prophet of Baal on Mount Carmel and the answer prayers for rain, all in chapter 18. The passage that we read this morning uh, is preceded by chapter Everything that happens in chapter 18 is a pointer or the director to what we just read in chapter 19. In chapter 18, let me quickly read verses 36 to 40 and verses 41 to 45 for us. Read it. First King chapter 18, and I read verses 36 to 40. And it is on the on the projector. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord, answer me. So these people will know that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also lit up the water and the drink. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, he is God, the Lord is God. Then what happened? Then Elijah commanded them, see the prophet of God. How many of them? Is it 400 or 450? Seize them. Don't let anyone get away. They seize them. And Elijah had them brought down to the kitchen garden and slaughtered them there. It was a tug of war between the prophet of Baal and one prophet of God. In Israel, they have been following Baal, and the peak of it was that they were offering, sacrificing their children on the altar of Baal to other gods. Elijah saw this God was not happy with that, and he told them that in Israel, there will no rain for three years, and it was so. Everybody was, they were thinking, uh, uh, Elijah has brought calamity, but all this calamity was brought because King Ahab was married Jeze uh, Jezebel and with our gods, they were started to, to, to sacrifice to other gods and they shifted from worshipping God to whom? To other gods. So that was the story. And at this point, Elijah said, oh yeah, come, bring your Bring your prophets. They have 400 prophets of Baal and 450 prophets of Ashur. But all these, they were unable to bring rain. So at this time, God told Elijah, go, go and tell that thing that will be rain. So he called them. He told the king, bring your prophets. And after the call, he had said, give us two bulls, prepare it. So they gave Elijah one and those prophets, 400 of them, another one. He had them to make an altar, call their God. From morning to evening, they were shouting. They were even cutting themselves. Blood were coming out. Elijah mocked them. Does your God run away? Maybe, maybe he's sleeping. Why can't you call a shout? They shouted. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. And at the end, Elijah now. Where we read in verses 36 to 40, he said, Okay, give him a humble, he slaughtered him, he asked them, Pour water on him, they pour water on him. He said, Pour more, they pour more. And he said, Lord, let these people know that you are God and that there is no way, and that you are sent me. Before he finished his prayer, something happened. Fire came down. The other prophet had been praying, crying since morning, no fire. But at this time, what happened? Before we take a tickle of an heart, fire came down. Oh my God. 
and everybody was mad. They were great to the heart. And they said, What is this? And Elijah commanded them. Don't let anyone of, of them go. And he slaughtered all those 400 prophets on that day. Let's read verses 41 to 45 and see what happened here also. And Elijah said to her, Go, eat and drink, for the sound of a heavy rain. So Hayab went up, eat and drink, but Elijah planted the top of Tamil. Bent down to the ground and put his fail between his knees. Go and look toward the sea. He told his servant, and he went up and looked. There's nothing there, he said. Seven times Elijah said, Go back. The seven times his servant reported, A cloud as small as a man ant is rising from the sea. That one is enough. So Elijah said, Go and tell her, Eat up your, your carriers and go down before the rain stops you. Meanwhile, the sky grew black. When the wind rose, the heavy rain started falling and heavy rolls up to Jezreel. The power of the Lord came on Elijah and tucking in his cloak in his bed, he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. Oh, that is another, another preaching for another day. But what I want to emphasize here was that for three years there was no rain. But at the command of the word of Elijah, what happened? There was rain. After these two conquests, two spiritual victories, now listen to what happened to Elijah in chapter 19 that we will read this morning. After great spiritual experience, there's what? Discouragement. Especially those requiring physical effort of involving great emotion. In chapter 19, verses 1 to 4. Ahab told Jesus everything that happened today, Elijah slaughtered 400 of your prophets. Those prophets were Jezreel prophets. They always, uh, prophet. they always told her everything that she wanted to hear. But not Elijah. Elijah would always tell her or the king, the mind of whom. The mind of, so there was always a conflict between Jezebel between Ahab and Ahab and Elijah. Let's read it from uh, verses 1 to 4. Now Ahab told Jesus everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with sword. Listen. So Jesus sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me. Be it ever so severe, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. He promised Elijah that he would do what? He would kill him by this time tomorrow. Listen to what happened now. And that is why, as a Christian, we need to study ourselves and know when burnout is coming in. Listen, verse 3. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servants there. Those that he, he was mentoring, these people have been with him for a long time. They have saw him perform many miracles. That same Ahab, uh, uh, Elijah, that commanded, that called life, that called fire down. At this time, he was running because of what? Because of a threat from a woman. What caused that burnout? He was exhausted. He ran. He even left all his associates, his companions, his friends, those that would say, Ah, oh my God, God has been using it. What happened? He left them. He said, What? Our stories today? Sometimes when you are born out, you say, No, I don't want to go to church. I'm tired. He said, No, I don't need Bible study again. No. You said, No, I don't need prayer meeting again. You said, no, I've been going to the church for a long time. I don't need those people again. He left all his words. He sat in the And that's what. While he himself went a day journey into the wilderness. Listen. A day journey. He was walking and running, looking at the back. Is she coming? Is she coming? As he was, as he was running, he was looking at the back. Is she coming? Well, was the woman. The woman was at the palace 
just a word. A man of God that just called that fire was running. Oh my God. I think my church. Can, do you see what happened to Elijah? A man of God that just called on fire now was running for just a war. Not even soldiers. Not even swore. My God, Elijah was born. Out. Listen, he now walked one day. Was that sensible? A day journey into the wilderness. No water, no food, nothing, nothing. He came to a bush, bush, sat down under him and prayed that he might do what? He might die. <laughs> those are the words of those that are born out. They want to commit suicide. It happens in our families, in relationship. It happens in, in our working place. When things turn around, some people say, no, that is all. I can't, I can't jump, I cannot take care of things, I cannot withhold things. Let me ask you, what has happened to you that has never happened to somebody before? That's not, that's not in me, all that, that. He said, I want to die. Listen, not only that, I have had enough love. He said, take my life. <laughs> he was even begging God to take his life. Listen, I am no better than my ancestors. Ancestors, he was copying. That is what happened when somebody is born up, they'll be comparing themselves. See, see, she's only sitting down, she's not doing anything in the church. And the one, see, my brother, he's not going to the church, his life is getting better. See that sister, see that brother. Compare, I'm not better than my ancestors. Why was he comparing himself to his? Ah, where you go for that? He's, he also said. I am the only one that will never bow down. Perhaps. How many remain? Huh? 7,000 that have never bowed down or peace bow. Sometimes we exaggerate our situation. We exaggerate what is happening to us. Only me. That was lie. That was exaggeration. It was because he, he got bought out. It happens to horrors, not only a like that. And when you read James chapter 5 and 17, I want us to read it. He said, A like that was a human being, even as we, even as we are. Which means, what happened to a like that has been written? Or do happen to who? Can happen to who? And happen to who? To, to us. Elijah was a man just like us. Elijah was a man. Just, so if that happened to Elijah, who called that a fire? Who are we? It can do what? It can happen to us. us. It has what? It has happened to us. So yeah, this morning, I want to quickly look at, I have about 25 stings of spiritual born out from the life of Elijah. But for the sake of time, I will quickly look at five. I put 10 down, but I will look at five because of time. Number one, this, this stings of spiritual born out, from the life of Elijah, as we can read from uh, First Kings chapter twenty, number one. When you discover this in your life, when I discover this in my life, it is a sign of, of what of burnout. You need to be careful. When fear grips me, Elijah was afraid. That was from verse three. A like a man, very bold man, that called down fire. At this time, he was what? He was what? Afraid. When fear beats you, be careful. There are some things that you don't fear before, but now, <sighs> my time, 
my children, my family, my work, my, my husband, my wife, my kids. Are you, are you there? My church. Is it your church? Number two, living a long life. Verse three, and run for his life. He ran. He was the one who said, bring me those prophets before. Now, he ran. Are you not also running? Are you not also running? Am I not also? What are you running from? What are you running away from? That's the question. You need to ask yourself. I need to ask myself, what am I running away from? What? Number three. This association. Also in verse three. He let his servants there. All these servants have been with him for a long time. At this time, he didn't work, he let them. Because of burnout, so many families have started. Relationship have what? Have been severe. So church members are not welcome to the church. Some parents have disowned their children. Valuable workers, employees, employers have lost them because of what? Because of honor. Why tell you one thing that is surprising? During this COVID, there was a summit that was carried out. And in America, every day, every day, there's about 10 pastors that are resigning. Every day in America, 10 pastors resigning because of what? Because of bonus. I've not resigned. And I'm not going to resign. Number four, impulsive decisions. From verse 4, why he went a day journey into the wilderness, he never thought about it because this uh, Ahab sent uh, uh, just sent him a message. It was what he never, he never prepared for that for a day into where into the wilderness, no water, nothing, nothing. Impossible decision when you discover that you are making a decision, impossible, you are not thinking right. Just calm. It's a sign of honor. Number five. When it goes beyond your physical limit, then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep because he was tired. He has run, he has walked for one day journey. He went beyond his physical limit. When you discover that what you are doing, you are no more enjoying it, what do you need to do? You need to pause. That's I promise one. Next week I will complete the from six to to ten. But let's go to the panacea, the remedy to the sting of spiritual burnout. Today I'll mention four. Number one, take rest. Take what? Take what? Rest. There are so many people they can't sleep. They can't rest. By the time you sleep like this, you say, I can't sleep. <clears throat> you better look for it and sleep. You will discover this in the life of uh, Elijah. Look at what happened to him. In verse 5, can we read it together? 19 5. I want us to read it together, please. If you are with your Bible, or you can see the, the, uh, the projector, please let us read together. Then he lay down under the bush. All at once, an angel touched him and said, Get up and, and eat. He slept. He, he slept. He was sleeping. And when you read from Psalm 23, verse 2 to 3 also, there's something there that I, I would like to. In verse 23, two to, it makes me lie down in this pasture. It leads me beside quiet water. It refreshes my soul. It guides me along the right path. For his name, name's look, no, when you sleep, your soul will what? Will be refreshed. Tell somebody, take a sleep. Please take a sleep. I can't hear you say, take a sleep. When you discover that you are burning out, you should do what? Take a sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep is 
very, very important. It's very, very what? Important. Number two. Let's read from verses uh, 8 to 10. That's first King chapter 19. I want to read verses 8 to 10. So he got up and ate and drank, straightened by the food. He traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Oil, the mountain of God. He here went into a cave and spent the night there. And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very serious of the Lord Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant. Turn down your orders and put your prophet to death with a sword and the holy one there. And now they are trying to, to do what? To kill him. He was venting his frustration on whom? On God. You know, many a times we complain, we don't pray to God. When you are when you discover that you are born out, vent your frustration to whom? To God. Then number three. Remember, relax. Oh sorry, remember, release and relax. Huh? Three things. Three hours. Remember. Relieve and relax. Remember that you are not in control. Release the control to God. Relax and let God take charge. Look, most of our burnout is because we think we are in charge. You are not in charge. Of ah! You are, I've seen very healthy people yesterday. They are no more, they are no more here today. They are not, you are not in charge. Reverend Ben is not in charge. You, you, you are not in charge. Remember, you are not in charge. Release everything to God. He's, he's the one who can take care of everything. I, you know, I can climb up, I can go down. It is because God wants you to do that. You are not in charge. Most of the time, you say, I mean, you are not in charge. God is in charge. Look, our life is like a leaf. You see them today. Tomorrow, we are there. We are gone. Remember, release, and do what? And relax. Number four, you need to reveal yourself. How do you reveal yourself? I've been talking about, uh, uh, about what? About steward. I told us about service. Somewhere to serve. Look, by the time you are serving, you are giving, you are you are releasing your body. Serve. Serve people. Serve the church. Look, this morning the choir have sung. You too, you are you have sung. Look for something to do. Look for something. Don't just come to the church and sing that. Look for something to do. Sir. Look at the town. Look for something to do. Study. Study the word of God. Look, every, everything that you might be passing through, this Bible is complete. Everything is here. Pray. Vent it to God. Tell it to God. And last week I talked about our simplicity. Live a simple life. Most of it, most of the point of this because sometimes we want to live as others are living. And you know, when you are copying a sick word, it's a signal that we too are what? Are sick. Instead for them to be copying us, we are not doing what? We are not. It's a signal that we are what? We are sick. Next week, I will continue. I want us to sing this song before we conclude. God is not, God is interested in you. That is why you are here, so that you can have a fresh life. Look for somewhere to serve, refresh yourself every day. Every day with spiritual discipline, look at your daily schedule and let everything about you center on Christ. You are not in charge. Do what you can do. But don't think that you are, if you are not there, nothing will be done. If you are not in my office, nothing will be done. If you are not in the church, nothing will be done. If you are not in, my, in the town, nothing will be done. If you are not in the, uh, in the, uh, in the mountain, nothing will be done. If you are not in the is because you are dear. That's why you are what? You are called. If you are no more dear, another person will do what? Will step in. 
in the month of August, I will not be here. The church is not close. People are what? Very powerful. Five evangelists. What do I call them? Evangelists. They will be stepping in. No God. Ah, these people are very, very powerful. So the month of August, don't miss it. Don't do what? Don't mean five. Every Sunday, one more person is going to be powerful. Please, church, if you know this song, what's the name? Feel my call. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Why are you ready? support as God will, is helping you. We want to thank you for everything that you have been doing. In fact, I'm very pleased about our giving, about our support, about our kindness. We appreciate you. And I want to challenge you to do what? Do more. As God is blessing you, as God is providing for you, please let us do what? Let us do what? We have three places to drop our offering. If you want to Drop if you want to send your e transfer, maybe your plan, your donation on the week when the church. So please let us do that. Let us take the offering prayer together. Let us take the offering prayer together. Let us pray. Dear God, receive our gifts, bless our gifts with your spirit so that we can accomplish more than we ask or imagine. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us pray.
by 2 p.m. So, our choir, church member, please, if you, as you are able, you can join us here. We have a service. Let us listen to Tamin information. This is very, very important. We were called in a way for it, and Ian were at the church basement. Ian, one night, uh, when we were leaving a meeting, a man named Irving Stowe said peace, and I said, don't we should make that a great peace? And Irving came back the next evening and said, wow, that's a good name, we should call ourselves to meet so we did. My name is Bill Darnell. I live in Vernon, British Columbia. I'm a member of Trinity United Church. I'm a grandfather, a retired teacher, a husband, and I've been an environmental activist most of my adult life. Camping had a big effect on me because I grew up in suburban Toronto and didn't have much access to the natural world. When I was at camp, we were allowed to meet nature on our own terms for a full two weeks. And that really sustained me through my adult life. So when I saw things that were wrong, things that we were doing to damage our environment and our life, I was able to take action to correct them, to draw on that experience. When I was 25 years old, not that far removed from camp, and living in Vancouver, the United States government was testing nuclear weapons in Alaska. That seemed crazy. And so a number of us sailed a vessel, also renamed Greenpeace, to Alaska. And ultimately, we were able to stop the United States government testing nuclear weapons on the ground. Your mission and service gifts support over two dozen United Church run camps across the country. Every year, your generosity gives thousands of children an opportunity to go to camp. Thank you to your gifts and mission and service of the United Church of Canada. Camping made an incredible lifelong difference for me, and I know it will make a lifelong difference for the young people across this country. Thank you to your giving that supports our church in the mission and service. Also, our church also we have also have a camp at uh, Northampton. I plan that bring this office out will be there for maybe some few days just to talk to God, look at the nature, pray, sleep, and uh, yeah. So let's come to Him as we are here. Let us take our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession now. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we give you thanks today for the abundant gift we receive, the assurance of your love day by day, the relief of your mercy when we recognize our failures, hope to sustain us when things seem great, and peace that comes when we trust ourselves to your keeping, to your eternal keeping. So for all these gifts and all that's blessing, we recognize around us. We give you thanks in this moment of silence. Dear Jesus, today we pray for all those who life seems empty of joy because the going is tough and friends still seem far away because their hearts are filled with disappointment because their sorrow and grief are keen this day. Support each one in your brother compassion. Dear Jesus, we remember before you those who lives are empty of peace and hope because they are struggling with illness or disability. At this time, we remember Carter Stone and uh, Maria Gochos, David Uchat, Dale and Donna Garrison, Mugen Makala, Trevor Nelson, Ken Nicholas, Suzette Madonna, Will, Maggie, Will and Maggie Patterson, Steve Paul, Flores Idiom, Lori Young, Katarina Lelahan, Reverend Ademir and Oluwa Tobi Adeli and family, and all our church members, those that are near and far, those that need our prayer at this time. Because we are powerless in the face of violence or other forces beyond our country. We also remember those that are living around this church will pray that you put the love of this church in their hearts so that they will choose to become our church members. We also pray today 
for all who struggling to overcome the effects of pandemic. Send your peace and promise with signs of new hope. I really hope. Dear Jesus, remember before you those for whom life is frustrated because they are without work, because they have made poor choices and cannot find a way forward. Because of calmness does not seem clear. Support so, and lead them in their path. Dear Jesus, fill us with energy and compassion to reach out to those facing the difficult time. May we become the gift we have received in Jesus. For it is in your name we pray. Say the words you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on heart as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is Pass Me Not, for Jack to Save Me. And it's for Voices United number 665. I want you to sing that songs in the prayer mode.
take our part. May hope comfort our world. And we go with patience, hope, and love. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Let's sing the Quran and the Bishop together.